What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how to make desert chrome in Adobe Photoshop. Dread Labs. All right, so before we start off the video, you can actually get the project files for this tutorial and all of my other tutorials on my channel if you become a patron of mine. There's a link in the description down below and at the end of the video, I'll explain a little bit more. But right now, let's get into this. All right, guys, so I know I've done a lot of different Chrome tutorials on my channel so far, uh, but this one is one that I did a long time ago. I think it was in 2018 when I did this the first time, uh, this technique, and when I did a little bit of research on it. Um, anyways, regardless of that, I just wanted to show you how I did this because I realized I'd never told you guys uh, on my channel. So basically what this style is, is it's inspired by airbrush chrome uh, artworks from I think the 80s, something like that. Uh, it came up in movie posters, video game covers, stuff like that. And uh, the term that I see a lot is desert chrome. So uh, I'll just give you a quick example because I found this on Tumblr. Uh, so you can find us on desertchrome.tumblr.com and as you can see you have these very heavy uh, chrome looking text and as you can see in the reflection it kind of looks like in it there you can see like a desert skyline in the reflection i think that's where the name comes from and here we have an actual desert actually um, anyways i wanted to talk a little bit about how this style is built up and what you can do to try to kind of recreate it so here in photoshop basically what we have here is a couple of textures uh, let me just go into our smart object where we have the actual Chrome file listed up. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a new document featuring the text here. So, so we'll start out like this. All right, so the first thing I want to do is make a gradient. And if we look at the examples here, uh, you really see a very, very tight gradient between a couple of specific colors. So let's just recreate it first. So what I'm gonna do is go here and click on gradient. And this will create a new gradient layer. So I'll just go to the basics and make a solid gradient. So there's no transparency anywhere. And now basically we're going to grab a couple of colors. Also, by the way, guys, in the background, you might hear a bit of noise. There's construction work going outside of my apartment. Uh, and yeah, sadly I cannot do anything about it. Anyways, you wanna go for a dark blue, uh, a little bit desaturated, kind of like this. And you want to basically convert that into a lighter blue. And you can saturate this a little bit more. Something like this I think should be good. And then you want to have that go to white. All right, so let's take a look at this if this makes sense. And yeah, you can kind of see it here. This is basically the first part of the gradient here. Maybe we can also make it a little bit yellow, as you can see here. Um, and then basically what the jig is, is you have to make a very dark or hard, uh, well, transition into almost black. So uh, first I'm going to go and make this a little bit yellow, just a little bit like this. And as you can see, the location, I'll put this at 51% and I'll make a new point and put that at 50 and we'll make that like super dark. Almost black, like this. And let's just drag them even closer together. There's almost no transition in between. It's just like a hard transition. Um, and then we need to go from like this dark brown to a gold and then to a white. So let's just copy the white. All right, so let's go with the dark brown. And we'll grab the gold. And finally, we'll make this a little, little base, just super subtle. All right, so now we kind of have that similar gradient going on and we need to make it visible only where our text is, which we can do by going to right click and click on create clipping mask. And we'll, now we kind of see uh, what's going on. The gradient is a little bit too big. So what we can do is double click on here and scale the gradient down a little bit. And something like this should be fine, I think. So looking at our example here, uh, we see a couple of things that this line is way too straight. So we need to modify that. And we're gonna do that manually actually. 
Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can also do it like not manually, but I prefer to do it manually. So uh, you can just re uh, change it to where uh, the letters are basically. Okay, so first I'm gonna make this into a smart object by right clicking it and clicking on convert to smart object. Then the next thing I wanna do is go to filter, liquify. So bring up the liquify menu. And basically this is nice because we can see the text, but we can also see our gradient. So what we want to do here is grab the top tool here, zoom in. So basically what you want to do is push up the lines around the sides of each letter. So like this. So you want to kind of make like this little like crevice or canyon, I guess, uh, around the edges of each letter. And Around like longer parts like these, you can make it kind of like wavy. It doesn't really have to be super, super tight or super like hard because it's usually done with uh, like brushes and stuff like that in real life. So it's okay to be off a little bit, you know. All right, so when you're finished, we'll click on OK. And as you can see, we now have those waves applied to our text here. All right, so the next part is we're gonna blur this out just a little bit so that it looks a little bit more like airbrushed, I guess. So we'll do that with a quick Gaussian blur. Uh, some like, I don't know, two pixels should be fine. It should do the trick. But this of course depends on the size of your document. So the next part is we're gonna add some depth to this with the bevel and embosses. So you wanna hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and duplicate the text on top of what you have so far. Next step is to remove the fill. And then we're gonna add a bevel and emboss by going to layer, layer style, bevel and emboss. And as you can see, this creates some depth here. And basically what we did is by removing the fill, you basically remove the opacity of the text, but every layer style that you apply to this will still be visible. All right, so the next part is basically uh, up to whatever you like. You can really experiment with this. Uh, I'm just gonna reset my settings to default. Kind of increase the size a little bit. We'll make the shadows a little bit darker. And something like this should do the trick, I guess. Um, maybe lower the opacity a little bit. And now we wanna duplicate this once more. And now we're going to make the reflection. So instead of the gloss contour that we have now, we're gonna use the ring gloss contour. And this really makes something look like chrome, as you can see here. Uh, we're also gonna increase the depth and maybe lower the size a little bit. So something like this should be fine. So finally, before we're gonna do anything else, I wanna increase the contrast just a little bit. So we'll just use a curves adjustment layer, like this one. So the, idea, the goal of this is basically to increase the contrast a little bit. And uh, at this point, you can still you know, uh, do a couple of adjustments that you like. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is change the yellow a little bit because it feels a little bit too yellowy. So we're just gonna go into our smart object and change this. So perhaps this should work a little bit better for what I'm looking for. And I, I kinda like this. All right, so now we kind of want to flatten this up so we can add some filters to this. So we'll just select the whole thing. We'll group it, call this Chrome. And then we'll convert this to a smart object as well. And the first thing I want to do is kind of blur this out and because this usually is made with an airbrush, it's not going to have these hard edges like we have here at the top. So we're going to go and add a Gaussian blur to this. I think two pixels, maybe three. Three should be fine. And the next thing I wanna do is add some grain, which I'm gonna do by going to filter, filter gallery, just remove all of them for now. And then we'll click on, where is it? Under the texture folder, we'll click on grain. So the clumped one is pretty nice, I think. It has a little bit of larger grain. We'll lower the intensity just a little bit. But yeah, it gives you that old school look. I really like that. So uh, as you can see, yeah, this looks pretty cool. You might want to increase the contrast a little bit after you've done this. So we'll just go with the curve and up this. Uh, this one is optional though. So yeah, I don't really think I like this. I kind of like these ones better, I think. So I'll just remove the curve for now. All right, so the next part is adding some noise layers. So what I'm gonna do is basically make a new layer, press shift backspace on my keyboard. So this will bring up the fill menu. 
and instead of foreground color, we're gonna go with a 50% gray. After that, we're gonna go to filter, noise, add noise, and a noise of 10% is fine. And let's put this to color burn, I think. Yeah, this looks pretty cool, uh, but it's a little bit too dark. So what we can do is adjust the la noise layer with a curse. And we'll make this a little bit lighter, like this. And you can play around with the opacity as well, if you like. So I'm gonna do this once more. Uh, so again, new layer, shift backspace, 50% gray. Go to filter and add noise. We'll put this to screen and we'll make this one a tad darker. So something like this should be fine, I think. All right, so to finalize this is we're gonna add one last grain texture. This texture comes from the film grain texture pack by Aran Preston. It's available on dreadlabs.net and there's a link in the description if you want to. Again, this step is completely optional because this pack has been paid. Uh, but yeah, if you want to use it, the link is in the description. And if you feel like you're satisfied with your solution so far, you can go for it as well. But if you don't feel like paying for a package, then you can also leave it here. So let's grab one of these soft grains. And we'll put the blend mode to, I guess, screen. And then with the curves menu, we'll also make this a little bit darker. All right, so now finally what we can do is if you feel like the textures have uh, changed your color a little bit, you can always add a hue saturation, add some saturation to this, and even change the uh, hue. So I think mine is fine with this so far. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Maybe we'll add, even add another texture here. Maybe it's like some scan lines or something. And maybe lower the opacity a little bit on that. All right, so one last thing that you can do is add some lens flares to this. And this is from uh, Jack's store, the Album Art Archive store, the Album Art Asset store. So his webshop also contains a lot of cool assets. The one that I'm gonna use are from the lens flare kit. So what you can do here is basically add a couple of lens flares in so that it uh, looks a little bit more realistic. You know, it's as, just as a finishing touch. Again, you don't necessarily need to do this, but in my opinion, it looks pretty cool. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it at this. All right, so there you have it, a desert chrome effect in Adobe Photoshop. So again, if you wanna get the project files for these and all of my other tutorials, you can become a patron of mine. And if you don't know, if you become a patron, you won't only get access to all of my tutorial project files, you also get a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role. If you go one tier up, you also get access to exclusive videos, including how to start your own clothing brand. Besides that, you support the channel a lot and you can make me be able to make more tutorials for you guys and make me be able to keep up this channel and give you tutorials on a weekly basis. So if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and a subscribe if you haven't already because it also supports the channel. And with all of that being said, this was Tom from Dead Labs tuning out.